This is our fourth video in a series on using the fused location provider to get GPS information. In this, in our last video, we took a look at the Google API client that we built down here, and we saw that we can add some listeners, and when certain life cycle events happen during the during the life cycle of uh, GPS and also connecting to GPS, it's going to invoke methods on these callbacks. Now we use interfaces to have the current class act as the callback that will receive those messages. We also used a location request to determine how frequently we want to request location updates, how frequently we're willing to receive location updates that we piggyback off of a different application, and how accurate we want those uh, location updates to be, where all of these, both the accuracy and the interval, uh, in, uh, the accuracy and the interval of updates, uh, are, are on one side of a balance, where the other side of that balance is the battery life or the power that's consumed. Finally, uh, we saw how we could pull all of those together by using this request location updates call uh, that we're calling from unconnected. Now in this video, we're going to see how the Android activity lifecycle plays into location management. We know that locations uh, are battery intensive, so we want to be conservative with our use of those resources. We've already used onCreate, and onCreate is where we initialize things because it's where our method begins. And by the way, if this, if this diagram, if you haven't seen this before, I cover this in a different video called the Android activity lifecycle. So I'm just giving it a quick overview here. So onCreate means we create our object, then we have to go through an onStart to start the object, and then an onResume to take it to a visible state. Once it's in a visible state, it can cycle through several other states and come back to visible again. It can go to a partially visible, partially obscured state. It can also go to a stop state where it's in the background, and then it can come back to uh, start again. But uh, through each of these cycles, it won't come back and hit on create again. So on create is the initialization we want to do only when the app, when the activity first starts up. Now, the on start and on stop, that's a good time to tell the Google API client that we want to connect or we want to disconnect. In other words, we want to start, uh, we, we want to try to start listening for GPS or we want to stop listening for GPS. Because you see, those will get called, but typically on start means the activity is about to become visible and previously it was not visible. Either it was not created before, in other words, this is the first time we've created it, or it went to an invisible state. When it's not visible, we typically don't care about GPS if it's for that specific screen. Now before it becomes invisible, we're gonna go to on stop, and in the on stop, we say, okay, I want to disconnect from the uh, Google API service. Now we also have on resume and on pause. In that case, we might subscribe and unsubscribe to GPS. So we're still connected to the Google API client, but we're simply subscribing and unsubscribing from one component of that, and that is the GPS. So see, we're using a good deal of methods that appear here on the lifecycle. Let's go ahead and start with the method called onStart. So I hold control, which will allow me to overwrite a method, and I'm going to type in onStart. And I'm going to look in fragment activity. Typically, I'll see onStart there. And sure enough, I scroll down, I see onStart. I'm going to double click, and it gives me the overwrite annotation and the proper method signature. So I have, remember, I have declared up above a variable called Google API client. So in the on start, first of all, we'll go ahead and do the super call, and then we're gonna say Google API client, and then I'm gonna say connect. Which means, okay, I want to initialize this relationship with the Google API client. Now on stop. So remember, on start means that we're about to become visible. On, on stop means we're about to become invisible. In other words, we're going to the background, Maybe we're opening another app, or maybe we're going to a different screen or a different activity in our current app. So on stop, and in this case, I'm trying a different approach. I'm just starting to type it, and you see that as I type it, Android Studio says, oh, 
I bet you want to overwrite a method called on stop. And sure enough, I do. So I choose enter and I let Android Studio do the rest of the work for me. We'll leave the super call in. And this time I'm going to say Google API client and we're going to say disconnect because we're going invisible. Now on pause and on unpause, uh, sorry, on resume and on pause are very sad, but that just means we're entering or leaving a partially obscured state. So we don't want to go through all the overhead of connecting and disconnecting to the Google API client. But uh, what we might want to do is say, okay, I want to subscribe and unsubscribe from the GPS service. So let's start with on resume. On resume, I'll start typing it again. Okay. And sure enough, as I am patient a little bit, it shows me, hey, I think you want to overwrite a method, which is true. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, are we connected? If uh, M, uh, or Google, rather, Google API client dot is connected, okay, then I'm going to say request location updates. And you might recall this is a method I made in a previous video where for request location updates, we're simply saying take our Google API client, take our update criteria, in other words, a time interval, and also uh, an accuracy, and then take a location listener, which is the current class, marry all of these together. Now, let's think about something here. We said if it is connected, but we're not doing anything if it's not connected. So what if it's not connected? Don't worry, we have that case handled. If it's not connected, then when it does connect, it will automatically call our callback method on connected. And you see on connected is also going to navigate to request location updates. Okay, so that's on resume. Let's finally handle on pause. Whoops. Okay. And it wants to override a method for us. We say super on pause. That's fine. Now to unsubscribe, I'm going to say location services dot fuse location API dot remove location updates. And in this case, I'm going to pass in my Google API client. And I'm going to pass a reference of the listener that I wish to unsubscribe. That listener simply is a reference to the current class. So in this case now, you see I have, uh, I have my subscription and my unsubscribe and so on and so forth. Everything so far is looking good. The last thing I want to do is I want to think about how to handle on location changed. And for the moment, I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to pop up a toast. We are in the UI thread, so a toast is perfectly legal here. So toast make text, pass in a reference to the current object, pass in a message, okay, location, changed and we'll say uh, location dot get latitude and then we'll say plus space plus location dot get longitude we'll do more with this in just a moment but let's go ahead and leave it at, at this for the moment and then toast dot length long and then dot show we just want to confirm that we have everything set up and working properly now one more thing we want to check and this is easy to forget and it's a common source of errors. We need to make sure that we have permissions properly. So I'm going to go to the Android manifest and I need to add several permissions. Uses permission, Android name, and I'm gonna say mock location, which would allow us to do, um, basically simulate that we're at a certain location. Uh, and then a few more, uses permission, and I'm going to say Android name, and we're going to say course location. Uh, that's kind of if we want to do like, uh, you know, a city. Like, am I in a city versus am I in a street? Finally, uses permission, Android name, and then we're going to say find location. So that's a more precise location. And finally, we're going to test out what we have. I've, I paused the recording and did a little pre-work because this takes some time. Uh, but what I did is I hit debug. Now after that, I have to go to what we call DDMS. It's a little tricky uh, if, if you're used to Eclipse like I am, but in any case, the debugger is going to bring up our application just like so. After we have our application running in an emulator, I click on this little guy here called Android Device Monitor, 
And that eventually will bring up this Android device monitor, which is what I called the DDMS uh, back in Eclipse days. So longitude, we'll make longitude uh, 84.5, which is roughly where Cincinnati is, uh, and then latitude 39.4, which again, roughly where Cincinnati is. I'm going to hit send and then quickly switch over to the Android emulator. So I choose send, I hit the Android emulator, and within, and there we go, within about a minute, you see that that location pops up. Now remember, we're only checking about once per minute, so if you don't see it right away, uh, you know, give it just a moment, and it, it may take a moment, so I just send it again. Depending on where it is within that minute, it might take a moment for it to pull and find that it has an updated location and then show again. So you might not get instant gratification depending on what you set your interval to. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. In our next video, we're going to see how we can take the latitude and longitude and we can actually display it on screen and also store it in some variables that we can use later. Thank you.